What's up guys, Artem MMA Analysis here, back with another preview video for UFC Fight Night, Hermanson vs. Strickland. This is going to be a great fight, man. We just saw Hermanson uh, wrestle with um, Kamzat Shamayev, Sean Strickland. On the other hand, he's been talking a lot of smack. A couple of his fights have been falling out, and I think it's just going to be a great fight night overall. I think it's definitely worth noting, though, that this is not going to be like my final prediction. This is just a preview video. I'm making this video, I'm going to do it all in one take, before all of my research, uh, just based off of my knowledge, and I will be making a much more in-depth video uh, later on uh, in the week, probably only in a couple of days since this video comes out. So, the first fight of the night, we've got Alexis Davis versus Julia Stoliarenko. Julia Stoliarenko, I believe, is actually the first fighter out of Lithuania to make it to the UFC. She was on The Ultimate Fighter, I think it was season 28 maybe season 27, and um, yeah, she's fighting at 135 pounds now, um, good for her, <laughs> so she's fighting at 135 pounds, she's on a two-fight losing streak, she lost to Julia Avila, by submission she's lost to Yana Kunitskaya, who is actually pretty highly ranked at the moment, um, I believe in the flyweight division now, before that she was winning over an Invicta, and she was also fighting um, on the Ultimate Fighter. So, apart from Alexis Davis, she's on a little bit of a downward skid in her career, I guess you could say. She is 37 years old. She lost to Caitlin Jukagin, not the worst loss in the world. Lost to Jennifer Maia once again. Could be worse. I lost to Viviana Rujo if she was coming up. She beat Sabina Mazo uh, on 10 months ago, which is actually a pretty good win there. And she lost to Penny Kianzad, who was on her way up uh, in the bantamweight division at, at the moment. She's kind of just out of the top 15, really. And uh, she's fighting Julia Stoliarenko. I actually do think we're going to see a decision win for Alexis Davis at the moment. Julia Stoliarenko, she hasn't got a win in the UFC yet. She hasn't really impressed me too much, to be honest, Alexis Davis, although although she's on her way down. She's still um, a pretty good fighter, I'm going to be honest, for 37. Alexis Davis, uh, pretty favored by the topology community, which I think is pretty fair. Um, on the other hand... Uh, Sam Alvey's been uh, complaining about bad judging recently. He's been claiming a, uh, a lot of split decisions not going his way. The UFC have decided to give him a guy who is not going to take him to decision. And I think Phil Hawes is going to knock out Sal Sam Alvey within the first two rounds. In fact, I actually think we're going to see a knockout in the first round, man. What did Sam Alvey do <laughs> for the UFC to give him the four Hawes? This is not good for Sam Alvey, man. I do love Sam Alvey, though. He's actually a pretty nice guy. Um, out of the cage, but he's on like a seven fight losing streak or something ridiculous at the moment. Lost that split decision to Wellington Terman, although Wellington Terman lost two points for eye pokes in that fight. Um, but yeah, he hasn't got a win since 2018. He's on a one, two, three, a six fight losing streak, including a draw. So I guess you could say a seven fight losing streak. Um, that draw to Dalton Jung actually looks pretty good <laughs> in hindsight. But uh, the point is, though, man, it's just not really working out. I remember they tried; to, they did try and give him in Heinish. Man, the UFC just hates him. <laughs> the UFC actually hates him. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think Phil Hawes is going to get the job done here. Um, I actually don't mind Sam Alvey, though. I actually saw him get, I think I, I think it was him I saw, uh, get a knockout when he fought in New Zealand uh, all those years ago. Cannot remember where it was. It was, it was in Auckland anyway. I think Sam Alvey fought on that card, but th that doesn't really matter at all. <laughs> the point is, Phil Hawes is going to win, in my opinion, by KO pretty early on. Now, this is a fight between two prospects, one of them a lot older than the other. Carlson Harris, man. I actually really like Carlson Harris, if you guys know me. Um, I like his story, and I like the fact that I think he got signed off looking for a fight, or looking forward to a fight, actually, sorry. Um, Dana, Dana White was impressed by him. I think it was when he beat Saigid Izak Mayev a year ago. Um, there he was 17 at one at the time. He came into the USC for Christian Aguil Aguilera, submitted him with the same kind of choke, and then he came out and fought Imba Kasanganai and uh, won by KO only three months ago. Very impressive uh, effort from Carlston Harris in the UFC so far, in my opinion. But man, he's running into a brick wall, man. An up and comer. Shavkat Rakhmanov, a guy with a lot of hype behind him, a guy which I have actually seen people say could beat Kamzat Shemaev, um, not at the moment, but in time, which is uh, pretty scary to say, man, but he's got that win over Michel Prezeros, who was 26-3 and at the time, win over Alex Oliveira, and before that, he's fighting over an M1, but man, he's only fought twice in the UFC, and there's so much hype behind Shavkat Rakhmanov, 
that uh, is kind of insane. And uh, if he gets this win, man, it's going to look really good on his record. Carlston Harris, very scary on the ground. He's definitely going to be a submission threat. And he does have a very... <laughs> he's actually got a chance to submit Shavkat. I'm going to be honest, Shavkat will be the favorite in this one. A lot of people will be picking Shavkat. I actually do think we're going to see Shavkat win. But I think we're going to see... Mm, I don't know... He, I don't think we're going to see it go the distance. I'm going to have to research this one a bit more, but do not count out Carlson Harris in this one. Chavkat Rachmanov, but um, in my opinion, I'm actually going to put a little bit less um, confidence in it than uh, a lot of other people probably will. Dennis Bondar, I believe he's making his UFC debut. He is. He has not fought for a year and four months, which is a little bit concerning for a 30-year-old, but he's finally made it to the UFC. He's fighting Malcolm Gordon, who I think is coming off a win against uh, Francisco Figueroa. Yes, he is where it was an interesting fight it went to the decision it wasn't really the greatest fight it was quite close as well from memory lost to Sue Marjeri that kind of happens lost to Amir Albazi that happens too but for that a uh, couple of wins over on the regional scene he's fighting out of Canada so the guys from Fight Night Picks are going to really like him but I'm going to have to go with Dennis Bondar I think he's going to win his UFC debut here I think the fight probably will go the distance it's definitely worth noting this fight is taking place at flyweight. Dennis is a more natural bantamweight, it seems. But uh, I trust that he's going to make the way, and I trust he's going to get the job done. Uh, by submission is what a lot of people are picking. I was thinking distance. But I'll research that one a little bit more, and we'll see what happens, eh? Uh, Brian Battle versus Tristan Gore. This fight was meant to happen for the Ultimate Fighter Season 29 finale. I think Trishon Gore had to pull out for some reason, and Brian Battle fought Gilbert Rabina instead. Now he's fighting Trishon Gore, so I guess you could call this like the real Tough 29 finale, even though it's not even on the main card of a fight night, which is interesting, but uh, putting all that aside, I do think Trishon Gore is actually going to knock him out. Um, yeah, he's going to knock him out. I think he's going to knock him out probably in the second round. Uh, I would say he's actually quite patient. He surprised me with his patience on the Ultimate Fighter. Uh, especially against Ryan Newman, where he just won the decision there. I definitely expect the Trishon to be a little bit less patient. I know I've said that a lot, but he's actually quite good, man. He doesn't really have any good wins on his um, on his professional record, which is 3-0. and But apart from that, um, yeah, he's, <laughs> I guess that's all you can really say. Uh, Gilbert Urbina lost to Brian Battle by submission. Uh, Gilbert Urbina lost to Trishon Gore by KO. I think I trust Trishon Gore, Gore to get the job done here. I think he's going to knock him out. And, um, yeah, that's all I really have to say. On the other hand, Mike Trezano is fighting Hakeem Dawodu. Hakeem, I guess you could still call him uh, a prospect to look out for in a way. He is only 5'8". I think he's fought in the PFL in the past. He's coming off a loss to Mosa Evloev, which which, uh, which which happens, guys. It happens. He's undefeated. But apart from that, he's got a couple of very good wins underneath his record. I believe he's in the top 15. If not, he's like just out of it in the UFC. Mike Trezano, on the other hand, kind of on the come up at the moment. I believe he is the ultimate fighter, season 28 winner. We beat John... John surely he didn't beat John Gunther in the finals, right? Must be the, Oh, he beat Joe Gennetti at the end to, uh, to win. And then he beat Luis Pena by split decision. Lost to Grant Dawson by submission. And then beat Ludovic Klein. Um, I wouldn't really put as much... Stock in that win as uh, a lot of people do. I think Ludovic Klein is actually on a little bit of a losing streak at the moment. Yes, he is. He has got he's got one win in the UFC, and it was over Shane Young, which is not a good look for Shane Young, man. I really like him, but yeah, man. With that being said, um, I think Hakeem Duaru is going to get the job done here. Decision, yeah. A lot of people picking decision for Hakeem. Uh, he's got a lot of decision wins recently. He does have a he kick KO over Yoshinori Hori. But uh, he went to decision with Movsa, went to decision with a couple of other guys as well. Yeah, I'm going to go with Hakeem Duwado in this one. I think the decision is probably pretty fair. Steven Peterson versus Julian Arosa. Uh, Steven Peterson is coming off a win over Chase Hooper where he missed a weight. Now, that was actually a pretty good reason to actually pick Steven Ch Peterson to, to beat Chase Hooper because he just used his side, size to kind of beat him. Julian Arosa, on the other hand, I think his last fight was actually at a catch weight, so he didn't miss weight for that one. But he beat Charles Jourdain. <laughs> Man, actually, that is a pretty good-looking win now if Charles Jordan came out against Andre Ural and looked incredible. But he's coming off a loss to Sung Wu Choi before that on a little bit of win. Win over Nate Landwehr, which looks pretty good, man. I'm going to have to go with Julian Arosa in this one uh, with, with a decent amount of confidence. I think, yeah, submission or decision is probably the most likely outcome. I will research it more for you guys. But, uh, 
Yeah, I've got a decent amount of confidence in Julian Arosa to get the job done. He's actually a pretty, pretty good fighter. Miles Johns versus John Castaneda. I'm going to go with Miles Johns here. I'm going to go with the younger guy. His one loss was to Mario Bautista about two years ago. He bounced back to Kevin Natividad and um, Anderson Dos Santos. Before that, he was fired in over on the Contender Series. And he also has a win over the undefeated Cole Smith at the time in the UFC. John Castaneda coming off a couple of losses uh, on the regional scene. He won and he lost in the UFC. And then he won against Eddie Wineland, which... Uh, I guess it's a pretty good win. Eddie Wyland, former prospect. He's an, he's an older guy, though. He's probably more known for being knocked out by Sean O'Malley, which is really unfortunate. But I'm going to go with Miles Johns on this one. I think he's going to get the job done. Uh, moving up on the card, uh, Jalton Almeida, a um, guy I'm really, really looking forward to. I think he's going to beat Danilo Marquez on this one. Jalton Almeida, he's 31, man. He's going to have to go. He's going to have to fight off, and if he wants to make his way to the belt... And, um, yeah, Jelton have made over a lot of hype on this guy. I picked him on a Dana White's Contender Series fight where I think he was actually the underdog. He out-wrestled Nasruddin Nasruddinov and ended up submitting him, which uh, was incredible. And before that, man, he's, he, his wins aren't really that great, to be honest. But he just got that jiu-jitsu, <laughs> which is uh, crazy. Danilo Marquez is a massive guy for 205, he's 6'6", with 77-inch reach. He just lost by K to Kennedy in Jukwuku about six months ago. For that, it went over Mike Sloan Rodriguez, which doesn't really look that great. He beat Cadiz Ibrogmanov. And for that, he's fighting over on the regional scene. Owen 16 guy there, man. But anyway, with that being said, Jalton Almeida is going to win this one. I'm actually going to pick a submission. Um, KO could happen. He, he's, he's a great guy, man. He's, he's great on the feet and he's great on the ground. A lot of hype on Jalton Almeida from my side. Now, Jason Witt versus Philip Rowe. This is a fight I'm going to have to research. I don't really know too much. Uh, about this one, I will admit, Jason Witt, though, coming off a win of Brian Barberino, which I don't hold much stock in, to be honest. Um, lost to Matt Semelsberger. Oh, I mean, I guess that happens. Um, but Philip Bro, the guy that beat Orion Koske to take his um, O away, and he's got a win over Gabe Green. He beat Leon Shabazian. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to be honest. I don't know much about this fight. A lot of people picking Rowe. I need to research this one. Um, I'm going to be honest. I don't really too much. I guess I'm going to go with Roe at the moment. Chidi Njokwari fighting Mark andre Barry Alt. Chidi Njokwari, um, the younger brother of... Oh, I can't remember his name now. But anyway, <laughs> he's got an older brother that fought in the UFC before. He's going to be making his UFC debut now. He came off a win over Mario Sosa, which uh, I picked Mario Sosa on this one. He was only like 22 years old or something. And Chidi and Jack Wani uh, made it look pretty easy. Kind of beat him everywhere. Ended up grounding and pounding his way to a contract. It's going over a win over Christian Torres. But before that, he lost a couple of fights in Bellator. Yeah, he won a couple of fights in Bellator too. Mark andre Barriott, on the other hand, coming for a win over Dolce, Langui, and Bila. Abu Azaita and um, a, a no contest there. A couple of losses as well in the UFC. I really want Shidi Njokwani to win. It's interesting that not many people are picking him. I think Njokwani, he's a good, he's definitely going to be a good underdog. Um, will he get out-wrestled by Mark andre Barriolt is the real question. I think, oh, at the moment, I'm going to go with Barriolt by decision. But Njokwani, he's, he, he's a solid guy, man. He, he's definitely someone to look out for. This is another fight to look out for, man. Nick Maximov, I think it's just going to be a bit too much too soon. He's only 24 years old. He's 7-0. He beat Cody Brundage in a fight which was a lot closer than it should have been. He uh, beat a heavyweight in Dana White's Contender Series, and apart from that, lots of submissions. He's a Nick Diaz, Nate, Ge Nate Diaz guy. He's got a lot of hype behind him, which will be why, at the moment, he's been put in the co-main event spot. Gets Puna Hali Soriano, who just got um, outstruck by Brendan Allen, who recently got knocked out by Chris Curtis. And uh, before that, Puna Hali Soriano um, knocked out Dusko. He knocked out Oscar Piocha. And uh, he beat Jamie Pickett by decision, which somehow was a decent win. Now that Jamie Pickett just beat a guy I was really high on in uh, Joseph Holmes. So, uh, good for him, I guess. But uh, Puna Hali Soriano fighting the jiu-jitsu guy, Nick Maximov. If Nick Maximov can get him to the ground, he'll probably be able to submit him with uh, not too much problems. But Puna Hali Soriano, he's a knockout artist. He can knock guys out in the first round. But he was outclassed by Brendan Allen. Um, in the second and third round, especially in their fight. If the fight leaves the first round, Nick Maximoff will probably find the sub. But, uh, yeah. Um, Punahali Soriano is probably going to be a decent favorite in this one. I do I do just think it's a little bit too... I want to pick Nick Maximoff, obviously. 
But I think it's just too much too soon, man. They really should just be building Nick Maximov up against the guys like Cody Brundage. Guys that are at the lower levels of the UFC. I think this is just a little bit too much too soon, man. I don't really like to see it that much. Uh, Jack Hermanson versus Sean Strickland. At the first, man, I'm going to be honest. When this fight was first made, I was on Jack Hermanson's side. I thought we were going to see a submission out of him, but then I remembered that Sean Strickland is actually pretty solid on the ground himself. Uh, Sean Strickland, I think he's just going to be a bit better on the feet. I think Sean Strickland is probably actually going to keep the fight on the feet because Jack Hermanson's that jiu-jitsu guy. He's a submission guy. He's not really a wrestling guy, uh, even though he just fought um, Kamzat Shemaev in a wrestling match. And, didn't really do too well, even though he's quite a big guy. He did get out-wrestled by Kamzat in that fight. But he's got a win over Edmund Shabazian, which is cool. He lost to Marvin Vittori. That submission over Calvin Gastelum was a pretty decent win, I guess you could say. He beat uh, Jacare Souza by a decision, and he's, he lost to Jared Cannonier as well. Sean Strickland, on the other hand, a bit of a win streak. Uriah Hall in a main event, actually. Christoph Jotko, Brendan Allen, Jack Marshman, and Nordin Taleb. Uh, I'm going to go with Sean Strickland in this one. Um, if Hermanson's to win, it will be by submission. If Strickland's to win, it will be by KO or decision. I don't think Strickland's going to submit <laughs> Jack Hermanson, to be honest. This is a great fight, man. I think Sean Strickland is probably thinking of it as a title eliminator. Um, which, it, which it probably shouldn't be, because Derek Brunson versus... Um oh, man. I forgot his name already. Jared Cannonier is happening. Um... Yeah, I think Sean Strickland is going to be one fight away after he wins this one here for a title shot. I know he's calling out Adesanya. I think Adesanya would smoke Strickland, to be honest. Um, but yeah, with that being said, I think this is a great fight and a great main event. And I'll see you guys in the next one.